different by our guys. You know, you you um, after the week we had last week, it was really disappointing. You know, um, not a gra- it felt like we just did not play very well against Fort Wayne, and I thought they played well. They certainly had a big part of that. Uh, I thought we played really well for most of the game against Oral Roberts. And, you know, we'll go 22 for 33 from the line, amongst some other things, rebounding late when we were small. And, I mean, that was a beat-up locker room, pretty demoralizing loss. And to come back the way we did, we did a good job of practice, watched film, and our guys just really kept their head up. And there wasn't much sulking or whining or complaining, and it was on to the next play. And we talk about NBA all the time, next best action. And I just thought our guys showed a lot of resolve. We came out. It was pretty benign, you know, in the dome, I thought. Not a lot of energy, and I thought our guys did a great job of creating energy. And then there was a lot of ebbs and flow that first half. We jump out uh, to the big lead. Then we really, uh, we lose Covington uh, one time. We lose um, number 10, Badish, uh, one time. And then they just drive it right to the rim for an uncontested layup, and they go on an 8-0 or 10-0 run. And then we just struggle guard the screen and roll, and it felt like they were carving us up. And we didn't have an answer. We finally played Burnett as the five, and switched one through five, and just kind of limped in with a one-point lead. And you go into halftime, and you're kind of wondering, all right, where are we at mentally, to be honest? And um, there was no flinch, you know, and you come out, and we jumped on them, went on a, what was it, a 14-0 run to start the second half. We knew you were coming back for that. <laughs> and... Um, uh, jumped on him with a 14-0 run, were able to play in front, really got downhill. I thought the difference in the game was in the second half, we outscored him 24 to 10 in the paint, uh, which means A, we're getting to the rim and getting easy ones, and B, we're really guarding screen and roll well and getting back on defense, and those are the two biggest keys for the game. Um, and we could talk about a lot of different guys, but I think at the end of the day, 16 assists and nine turnovers was key. Uh, we had a rut there, but we're really over dribbling um, this year. And we've done a bunch of stuff in practice just to share the ball, move the ball. And I think it's starting to show the last two games. And with ball movement, you get better shots, and our shooting percentages have really gone up. And with that, we'll open it up. Uh, nice game offensively from Burnett. Is that something that? we could see more of here? Yeah, I, I, feel, I feel like Trey. Uh, the last two games, I feel like he's played well. You know, I thought he had a great game against um, Oral Roberts. Shot a good percentage. Uh, just got in foul trouble, you know, and that's an area he's got to get better at. But I think he's starting to figure some things out. You know, junior college transfers, sometimes it takes time. And, you know, it's hard as a coach because sometimes you're in, he, he's been in, he's been out. He's been in, he started every game. It gets to a point where it's like, you know, you need to see improvement in some areas too. And um, we had a good talk. At the uh, I think it was after the Fort Wayne game, in front of the team, uh, with his role and what he needs to do, along with some other guys. It wasn't just Trey. Um, and then just pulled him aside and just said, "Hey, we believe in you. You're a great. You're a great person first and foremost. You got a great heart to you, and you're a good player. We just need you to go play and stop thinking so much. He's trying to please. He's trying to do the right thing." And just like, Trey, just go play. And I think there's a little bit of a sense of relief. Not, not relief, but, you know, uh, he's playing freer, you know, because he's a talented kid. So, but did a great job. And I thought he did a great job defensively uh, when we put him on Fuller. How about uh, Tyler, Did what he did after halftime? Tyler's a competitor. Nobody's harder on himself than Tyler. And I think, you know, he's been in a little bit of a funk. And I think he's taking it pretty personally, and he's beat, you know, and that's a hard thing. It's a, you guys know, it's a long, long year, and we had some long practices early in the year, and then everything's new, so it just takes time, you know. And I mean, he's had to. I mean, like we said many times, he starts as the one, he's playing the threes, guarding fours, and he's just doing everything, and that takes its toll mentally, physically, and he, you know, the last two days he shot it a lot better in practice. And um, it was good to see. But more than anything, he had seven assists, you know. And so he's just, he's gone back to, I think, just trying to keep the game simpler, let it come as it may, and then allowing himself to make some plays that way. But, yeah, he had a heck of a second half. And the study got everyone going, you know, making the right pass, making the right play, knowing when to get to the rim, knowing when to 
kick it out. It seemed like you could inside game was working. A lot of layups coaching, but not a lot of outside shots. It seemed like the inside game was really working. Why did you detect the pain? Uh, yeah, you know, we uh, early on, I thought we got to the rim to start the game. And then we did what we do sometimes. And when you, you know, when you don't have a lot of size inside and, and just a go-to guy where you can just throw it in there and he's gonna, you know he's going to score, and James has made strides, but you um, sometimes you go in those ruts where you just start cranking them up. And we started cranking them up, you know, that probably the last 10 minutes of the first half, roughly. And it's a good thing we made some of those, but we were not getting to the rim. So that was, uh, we talked about it at halftime. The guys always write down three things we got to get better at on their own. They write them down. The coaches, we do our deal, but that was the number one thing, get to the rim. That's what the players put down. And so to start the second half, we just started running stuff that we hadn't run for a while. And we really got downhill. And it was all the guys. I mean, it was Brandon. It was Tyler. Um, it was Burnett, right? Mainly those three guys that really... Um, Created easy offense. I thought Brandon did a lot better job tonight getting to the rim. Um, now, a couple times he probably could have had dunks and he chose to pass them. Um, but but you know what? He's sharing the ball too. So you, you can't get mad at him that way. But you need to say something like, "Hey, just go do you know get to the get to the rim that way." But um, we did a lot better job attacking and getting to the paint as witnessed by twenty you know the twenty four second half points in the paint. Sometimes when you had, you were going about as small as you've ever gone this year. It was just like, my freshman team was taller than that lineup for a while there. <laughs> well, yeah, and you know, we've had, not at home, th that's what's funny, like, because part of me, you know, we haven't played well, uh, super great consistently at home, but I've been thinking a lot about it too, we haven't played small ball a lot at home. For whatever reason, but on the road we've had to do that a lot. Where Burnett, and that's the thing, we only have one. We're only playing one guy on our team. That's we only, James is the only guy on our team taller than six five that plays. I mean, Erop six five. He's listed at six six. He's six five. We all know it. <laughs> um, Burnett six five. But you know, <clears throat> but we've had to do it, and it's really helped us get back into a lot of games. Uh, North Dakota State, we played small ball a lot. DJ Davis was our five. Um, a lot of that game. But other than that, at home, we haven't had to do that much. But Denver, we went small ball. Um, Sam Houston, I could, Creighton, at Creighton, Burnett was our five a lot. And so, um, it's just, is it what we want to do? No, it's not. I mean, that's not. But with Flack being out for the year and Sparks, I mean, honestly, hasn't played a full game since late November. I mean, and it's nothing that he can control. Ankle, concussion, chip tooth. Uh, pulled hammy twice. I mean, what do you do, right? I mean, it's, um, so our guys are used to it. Trey gets reps as the five. Our guys feel comfortable with it. But it is hard to run sets because they don't know all the, you know, I mean, there's, and they're not rocket scientists, they're men's basketball players. <laughs> Big game on Saturday, you feel good going into North State? Uh, well, I don't know if I feel good, but it's a great opportunity. You know, they're first in the league now, right? I think they have two losses and South Dakota State has three. Uh, they have the sixth or seventh longest winning streak in the country, winning 23, I think, in a row, so whatever it is. Uh, but what an opportunity. Like, are you, I mean, they have what we want. I mean, they're the defending champs. It's going to be a great crowd. It's going to be packed. Um, uh, and so... Yeah, I mean, there'll be a lot of, I'm the oldest of five boys, so there's going to be a ton of kids there, or my family, and my wife's the second youngest of ten. And um, so we couldn't give out, we only get 50 tickets. I told them they got to buy their own. <laughs> and then the whole town of Mayville, I think, will be there. But, uh, and hopefully we'll get some Yotes fans. It's going to be an electric environment. It's going to be a great playoff atmosphere for our guys, and they're playing for first. So uh, we have nothing to lose. Lawrence Alexander is really, really, really good. Uh, I mean, I'm not, I don't know who the best player in the league is, but I know he's, I would say, the most valuable player in the league for everything that guy does for them. All the minutes he plays, leading score in the league, shoots it at a high percentage, makes every big shot in sight. And then Corey Brown is playing exceptionally well. And though, it's not an accident. Those two guys have started every game of their career, and they've been in big games. And so they got a heck of a team, and they've done a great job um, up there. So. I don't know if you're ever ready, but we're super excited about the challenge and the opportunity in front of us. Talk about your defense. Obviously, 